Should you be doing Roth conversions in the 24% tax bracket? Have a real life planning scenario where we're gonna break it down. That and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Should you be doing Roth conversions in the 24% tax bracket? Here's the situation. Young professional couple, okay, no kids. Uh, they each make about 125 to 150,000. The she's got a small bonus of maybe five grand, ten grand. So most of it is is base. His incentive bonus is is quite a bit more. Could be upwards of 50 grand. And so so easily 300,000 of income between the two of them. And both of them, they're very motivated financially. He, uh, he lost his dad uh, very early when he was young and so uh, was raised by a single mom with a few kids and therefore finances were always a huge challenge. I mean, what a hero she was, obviously, but finances, he remembers growing up, was just a struggle. And while he looked up to mom, he also was very determined that I'm going to find a way to build financial independence, financial security, and also to help mom. And then her family, uh, while her parents were still together and, and, and both healthy, didn't save up that much either. And so she remembers always worrying about her, uh, her family's finances and her parents' financial future. So both of them very motivated and without kids themselves, uh, they weren't able to have kids, they've been saving aggressively towards financial independence. Well, we've been working with them for a couple of years now and I tell you, it's a controversial strategy. We shifted all of their contributions to Roth and even are starting to do Roth conversions. That's right in the 24% tax bracket. Is that a wise choice? Is it something you should consider? Well, here's why we did it. There's five clear reasons, and it wasn't just, hey, you need to make this shift. We explored these together, and the first is we built out their five-factor retirement plan. That's right. In order for you to determine whether you're on track for retirement, you've got to look at five factors, and they're all interrelated. What age do you want to be done? How much do you plan on spending? And that's just that's not only your base spending every single month, but also your one-time expenses, also taxes, also health insurance, and then inflating all of that, right? So, so what do you plan on spending in retirement? What are your income sources going to be in retirement? And how will you optimize Social Security? What are your investment? How much are you saving up? What are your investments for retirement? Uh, and then finally, how much risk are you comfortable taking with those investments? And that risk determines what future return we could expect. Those five factors are all interrelated. And when worked together, when analyzed together, they help reveal, are you on track for retirement? What's it going to look like? Well, we did this five-factor retirement analysis, and most often people are looking to see, am I on track? Am I on track? But it also reveals a lot more than that. And in this instance, it also reveals, and we really plugged into, okay, what does that future income look like to provide the uh, enough income for your spending? And therefore, what tax bracket, what tax picture might we, m might we expect? Now, they're still about 10 years away from retirement, so all of this is just projecting, and things will certainly be different. Uh, both their spending and, and tax brackets will be different than what we expect, but we at least have a window, a, a perspective. Well, from that analysis, we could see that they were clearly going to be into that fourth tier of tax brackets, and currently right now, that's, they'd be in that 24% tax bracket out there with, without question. And further, when they were they when they started their required minimum distribution, it's very possible they were going to be in that fifth tier of tax brackets as well. And so we laid that out and said, well, you're in the fourth tier tax bracket right now. It goes 10, 12, 22, 24. You're in the 24% tax bracket right now. And it we're forecasting that you're going to be in that 24% tax bracket out there in the future, if not higher. Should we pay tax, voluntarily be willing to pay tax at the 24% tax bracket right now in, in hopes to avoid paying 24% out there in the future? And they said yes. Why? For a few other reasons, but the first reason was we analyzed it and said, now you're still gonna be in the same tax bracket out there in the future, if not higher. The second reason, and it all sort of plays off that first one, but 
they've historically been in the 28% or 32, excuse me, 33% tax bracket anyway. Now I'm talking about going back to how tax rates used to be. It used to be 10, 15, 25, 28. That fourth tier was the 28% tax bracket. So when they look at it and, and sort of we looked at it at, at a higher level, not just automatically, well, we're in the 24% tax bracket, that means pre-tax. When we, when we raised our view up and perspective up, they said, well, yeah, actually comparing to what we've paid for 20 years or so, first 20 years of our career, 24% is actually cheap compared to 28. And then that's the third reason. Those, those tax rates that, uh, that, that were brought in from the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, that could revert. We, they're set to sunset at the end of 25. And if Congress doesn't act, they're going to be back in the 10, 15, 25, 28, 33% tax bracket. And right now, if their income stayed the same and tax brackets reverts uh, and tax rates revert, then they would be in the 33% tax bracket. Therefore, again, they felt 24% was a bargain. Fourth reason they said, yeah, I, I think it does make sense to do Roth is, uh, is tax diversification. So that out there in retirement, not all of their funds are taxable. They have a choice of, okay, well, we are, this is a normal year or we're gonna be spending a little bit less, maybe we received an inheritance, something like that. And therefore we're okay drawing money out of our uh, out of our pre-tax uh, retirement buckets and therefore paying tax. Or, no, this is an expensive year. We are buying a vehicle. We're taking a, a once in a lifetime trip or we need a down payment for, for a house. We wanna draw from some non-taxable dollars so it doesn't push up push us into a, a higher tax bracket. So they wanted some tax diversification. So shifting to Roth with about 10 years left before retirement made a lot of sense to them as well. And then finally, they were just looking and saying, yeah, even if we are in the same tax bracket, if, if, they, if they don't let tax rates sunset and they do extend them, and we're still in the 24% tax bracket out there in the future, we wanna try to avoid IRMA, income related monthly adjustment amount, and other potential new taxes that could be created because, you know, you know which ones? Well, new taxes are always being created. The, the additional Medicare tax, net investment income tax. If you go back, there's way more taxes, income taxes today than there were even, you know, 20, 50 years ago even, because it's very unpopular to raise taxes. And so what they do is to create new taxes. And so even if from a regular tax bracket, they're looking and saying we're, in the, we're projected to be at the same level, there might be new taxes or to can avoid IRMA, that sort of thing. And they felt it was a good trade to shift to Roth right now. And then I'll throw in a sixth reason as well, even though it wasn't something that we talked about, no one's guaranteed tomorrow. And if one of them pass away, they still will have this large nest egg that they've built up, but they'll now have to, they'll now be at single tax rates, right? And so in retirement, if one of them passes away early, then they're likely to be easily into that fifth tier tax bracket as well, because it'd be based on single rates instead of joint. So those were the reasons and guys, financial planning or really working with your CFP isn't about just sort of directing, just do this, do this, do this. It's more about looking at all six areas of your financial life, how they fit together and then exploring, well then what conclusion should we draw together? And it was more of a case that we built along the way and there wasn't much sort of, well, you have to do this and, and no, we shouldn't. And it was just, well, here's the situation. Here's what the future looks like. Here's current tax rates. Here's what tax rates could be if there was, uh, if, if, the, if the Tax uh, Cuts and Jobs Act reverts back to, to previous tax rates and, and just sort of exploring through that leading to, yeah, it probably makes sense to, to, to shift over to Roth. So what'd we do? Well, we shifted their 401k contributions from pre-tax to Roth. This was a couple step process because now there was gonna be more tax withholdings coming out of their paycheck. Therefore, their net take home was going to go down. So we needed to work the budget and make sure that that, that all worked from a present financial position, let alone from a tax planning standpoint. So first is we shifted and they're maxing out those retirement accounts, shifting from pre-tax 401k to Roth 401k. Second, we've talked about this year, it's now, it's now legal where you can have your company match be 
into the Roth as well. No company that I know of is actually doing this just yet. They're still trying to figure out the logistics and these two folks, their companies aren't offering it either. But we started talking about, well, when it becomes available later this year, is that a shift that you'd want to make? And actually we did the math and for each of them having their company match, which I think combined between the two of them was going to be about 12 grand having 12 grand of additional income they paid tax on was still gonna keep them into the 24% tax bracket. And we talked about, well, if we do that, let's just figure out how to withhold, that might be a good idea. And then the third strategy we considered, we're not gonna do it just yet, still early in the year, but if they're unable to do the, uh, their company match as, as Roth, maybe even do a $15,000 Roth conversion. But again, we've gotta figure out where the tax withholdings will come from. On that Roth conversion, I don't want to withhold taxes, whether we do it in plan within their 401k or within their IRAs. I don't want to withhold taxes because that would be a withdrawal from the IRA and not only would be taxable, but would be penalized. So filling up and, and, and as, as much as we can in that 24% tax bracket, again, makes sense for those five, really six reasons. Figuring out exactly the approach to take Roth contributions, Roth company match, maybe a little bit of Roth conversions, doing, uh, withholding the taxes, covering the taxes another way. Controversial strategy, not appropriate for everyone, but the context is looking at all six areas of your financial life to see if that approach makes sense for you. Without looking at all six areas and doing that multi-year forecasting, you wouldn't have known. You, you, you can't know. So you gotta work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. Find us online, cohorn.com. That's Gorhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.